Hi guys, you see Liz Truss and her Tory government are in the pocket of the fossil fuel industry and are only listening to right-wing think tanks on how to deal with the economy and this energy crisis. It must be remembered that the current push for fracking will do little in the short term and medium term to bring down energy prices for two reasons. Licenses issued today will not see action taken for years. And second, gas sold on the international market will do little or nothing to affect the prices ordinary people and businesses in Britain are paying. Now, Jacob Rees-Mogg, the business secretary, hit back at critics of fracking, calling them Luddites, which is ironic for a man who has been extracted from the 19th century. But what was very promising is the pushback he and the government are getting from Tory backbenchers. This policy is very unpopular and Mogg's response to his Tory colleague will likely add fuel to the fire. Have a listen to this unexpected exchange. This is of such importance and it is sheer Luddite, Mr oh. Speaker, that opposes it. Well, Benzie, there's nothing Luddite about the people of Lancashire or of Fylde. And I just want to start by saying, Mr Speaker, how disappointed I am that Parliament was not informed about this before the media, that as a local member of Parliament, I was not given the courtesy, despite having requested for two weeks, contacting the Honourable Member to get information via his PPS. I've sent letters, I've sent WhatsApps, nothing back. So, Mr Speaker, can we be crystal clear on one thing? The Prime Minister of the Manchester Hustings, it's a matter for public record, you can find the clip, made it crystal clear, no ifs, no buts, no caveats, that fracking would only take place in the United Kingdom where there was local consent. Crystal clear. So if the Prime Minister is to remain a woman of her word, a woman that we can believe in, which I believe she is, can the Secretary of State outline how that local consent will be given and demonstrated in my constituency of fire? Mr Speaker, the honourable gentleman uh, would have heard my rival friend, the Prime Minister, in her speech um, on um, energy on the um, 8th of September, saying that we were lifting the moratorium on fracking. So I'm surprised that he feels he wasn't informed, because that has been announced. We obviously want to work with local communities, and it is really important that the companies who seek to extract shale gas come up with packages that make what they're proposing to do welcome to local communities. That is of fundamental importance and is what the Prime Minister has set out. Okay, notice here that he didn't say consent, he talked about packages, so that these companies would provide acceptable packages to local communities. So in a, in a sense, the government is washing their hands of the situation and saying, well, this is between communities and companies. But in reality, it will be government that will decide if these companies can frack in these areas. Now, I think what's happening here is a bit of a schism between government and the Conservative Party itself, because a lot of MPs, Conservative MPs, are concerned because this is a very unpopular policy. There is real concern, environmental concern, about uh, earthquakes and contaminated water supplies that fracking causes. It's not going to bring down energy prices in the short and medium term, so it's not going to really help people. And it seems to be the case that I, I would imagine that many Tory MPs are concerned that they will lose their seat at the next election on an issue like this. It's not popular and it seems to be driven by members of government who are surrounded by far right or right wing think tanks. These are the ones who are convincing Liz Truss and others, yeah, you need to push this policy. Don't, don't focus on wind or solar or anything like that. No, no, focus on things like fracking. These, poli these uh, policy providers, these uh, advice advisors, they don't care about the environment. They don't care about the Conservative Party. They don't care about ordinary people. They're, they're also pushing for the privatization of the NHS or the removal of the rights of workers. And Conservative MPs in the back benches are afraid that Liz Truss uh, doesn't believe that she can win the next election. So what she's doing is she's throwing as many sweeteners as possible before she leaves to these industries. 
in the hope that maybe she'll become a director or maybe it's just about donations to the party in the future. Look, we looked after you in 2022. So remember us at the next election. Remember to donate to us at the next election. And that's no good to an MP who's losing their seat. So I do hope that there's going to be massive pushback from conservative backbenchers against this policy. It doesn't help the economy. It doesn't help ordinary people. It doesn't help the environment. It doesn't bring down energy prices. It's about a small group of companies making some money. And as I said before, Jacob rees did not really cover the issue of consent here. He just said that they would provide packages to communities. I really think it's a case of the government saying, yes, you can frack there. And then the company saying, we're going to frack here, but don't worry, we'll give uh, you know the, the community some money or we'll, we'll make a donation to a charity or we'll help build a new school or something like that. And then uh, destroy the environment and uh, the water supply. I do hope there's going to be a split here within the Conservative Party. I think, I do hope this is, Issues like this will bring down Liz Truss's government. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.